Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Table Talk. I'm your host, Jake Combs, and tonight we have an Exploding Kittens extravaganza uh, of unboxing. We have Hand to Hand Wombat, we have Mantis, Happy Salmon, uh, the expansion for Poetry for Neanderthals, and Zombie Kittens, as well as a couple of little additions that they threw into the pack. Uh, all of these items were provided by the folks at Exploding Kittens for the purpose of this video and our upcoming reviews. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. All right. So I know Hand to Hand Wombat recently did go through Kickstarter. Um, the other ones, as far as I'm aware, were published and released directly from Exploding Kittens without crowdfunding. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and get started with Happy Salmon. Now, other than the fact that this game is by the people from Exploding Kittens, I know nothing about it. All I know is that literally every game we've played from Exploding Kittens has been an absolute win with our family. Um, so when we went through and told them what titles we'd be interested in reviewing next, um, we basically put down everything that we haven't played yet. Um, so Happy Salmon is one of them. Uh, basically, it states that it's a 90 second game that you'll basically want to continuously play. Uh, I mean, with a statement like that, uh, I def definitely anticipate this being pretty good. Now, it does have, you know, one of the little ads in here, Game of Cat and Mouth, Poetry for Neanderthals, Throw Throw Avocado and Exploding Minions. All of those are absolute wins. Uh, inside, we have two decks of cards, a green deck and a blue deck, and then we have, in classic Exploding Kittens fashion, a very simple, small instruction guide. Um, so let's just take a quick look at how to play. Um, so what you do is everyone gets a, de uh, a hand of cards and you try to find the player with the same card as you. Shout out the phrase on your card to the other, mm, other players and listen for someone shouting the same one. When you find the matching player, perform that action together. So like if you have fish bump or high five, you basically act on that. Um, now my question is what is a fish bump? I would assume it's gonna be similar to a fist bump. So on the back, we actually have the four different card types listed. So high five, exactly what it sounds like, and, uh, and as you would expect, is a high five. Uh, for a fish bump, you make a fist and then bump the f your front knuckles into your partner's front, uh, front knuckles. Okay, so that's literally a fist bump. Um, happy salmon, you slap your partner's forearm at least two times while they slap your forearm two times. Um, and then switch it up. You trade in places with your partner around the table and you take your personal deck of cards with you. Okay. And so how to win, there's the three player variant and silent player variant, uh, but basically to win, you're the first player to get rid of all of your cards by doing one of these actions. So let's go ahead and break open the cards. Alright, so we have four different colors and they are quite simple. They are just the high fives, the happy salmon, the fish bump, and the switch it up. And then the other deck, same thing, but different colors. So con concept seems very straightforward. Definitely going to be easy to learn and I suspect to play. 
but I suspect the real strategy is going to come in trying not to give all of your cards away to other players. Alright, now Mantis. It's a game of rainbows and revenge. So it has a comic about the manta shrimp. A similar rule book with a lot more words to it. Um, and, but basically the, the first player to win is going to be the one to get 10 or more cards in their score pile. Um, but the color of those cards don't matter. And so with the cards, the front of each card has a character with one color. The back reveals three different colors. And so, if, so you get basically two different types of actions. One's try to score, one's try to steal. Uh, if you want to try to score, you take the top card from the draw pile, turn it over in your tank. If the character color on the white side matches any of your characters in the tank, then you move all of the characters of that color including that one into your score pile and then turns over try to steal you take the top card from the draw pile turn it over in another player's tank if the character color on the white side matches any of the characters already in their tank move all of their characters of that color including that one into your tank and the turns over so definitely see my family doing a lot of stealing and then the same insert add. Now what I like about this one is that the cards are not wrapped in plastic. It's a, it feels like a, a paper band. Now, let's see. Kinda looks like there's something underneath it. Nope, just a little insert to make the box a little bigger, which is interesting. Not sure why they didn't just make a shorter box. But looking at the cards, we've got a few different mantis shrimp, a pirate one, for example. We got some holding tacos. And then it looks like this is a bit more of the same. Yeah, pretty straightforward. It's just every card is a different shrimp of a different color and kind of element. So this game, it says roughly takes only about 10 minutes to play. I definitely can see that being a short one for sure. Now, one of my favorite games of theirs is Poetry for Neanderthals. This is the expansion for it, as well as the stay at home pack that they threw in. And they also threw in the not safe for work replacement, replacement spink stick, which I'm guessing is just essentially another one of the clubs. But Poetry for Neanderthals um, is a pretty straightforward game. This one actually comes with a stack of cards where you can actually create your own. But essentially what it is, is you have a multi-syllable card where you basically go for one point or three points. So like this one, what you have Mammoth or Wooly Mammoth. And so you have to describe what's on the card using only single syllable words. And if you accidentally use a multi-syllable word, then whoever has the stick gets to hit you. And if they hit you, then you lose a point. I 
So it's been a while. So you either lose a point or like you gain like a wound or something like that. Now the stick in the regular version is a bat. So I'm just checking to see if this looks like it's going to be another bat. All right, so it is, I mean, it looks pretty bat shape. It might be a little, a little more flat, but it does say spank me. Being the big difference between this one and the regular safe work edition. And the whole purpose of this pack is basically for those that have played it enough times that some of the cards are getting a little boring and a little tried. So you now have new words that you can use, like cellar and wine cellar. And then for the stay at home pack, let's open that one up and take a look. So it says this is the free gift from your friends that make the cats that go boom game have fun. So we have dances or TikTok dances versus therapy or online therapy, sourdough, sourdough starter. Video, video filters. <sighs> So just a, a lot more different options to choose from. And we'll just stick them in the box as well. Next we have Zombie Kittens, which this is a new way to play Exploding Kittens. Now from what I understand, this box can be used by itself or added to your existing Exploding Kittens game. And this one also includes ads for Mantis and Taco Cat spelled backwards. So we have our updated rules, which is only a little bit more information than what we used to have. Let's see. So the, the new addition would be the zombie kitten. And we also have dig deeper, clairvoyance, and feed the dead. So clairvoyance, you play this card uh, once another player has diffused an exploding kitten, you will get to see where they add the exploding kitten card into the deck. Uh, dig deeper, you draw the top card from the draw pile, look at it and decide if you want to keep it. If so, put it in your hand, otherwise you must draw the next card, no matter what it is, and keep that. And feed the dead, you pick a dead player. All living players with cards except you must pick a card of their choice and give it to that player. You cannot play this card if there are no dead players. And then Zombie Kitten, if you drew an Exploding Kitten, you can but do not have to play this card instead of exploding. Place your Zombie Kitten card on the discard pile. If there are any dead players, you must choose one of them and bring them back into the game. Next, take the Exploding Kitten and, the, and without reordering or viewing the other cards, secretly put it back in the draw pile anywhere you'd like. If you bring another player back from the dead, You'll do the same thing with the Exploding Kitten card face up in front of them. This means you'll be putting two Exploding Kittens back into the deck at once, each in its own secret location. So it sounds like if you get taken out and you and use this to kind of stay in the game, you also bring back another dead player with you. So it sounds like it's a way to keep more people in the game which is really cool. Now, this is meant for two to five players. Now, what's curious about it is 
how can you do the zombie mode and really have it be beneficial with only two players? You know, it sounds like it's something where you're going to need, you know, more than those two to really have it be as effective or as fun. So let's go ahead and take a look at a couple of the new cards. So we have this basically Hulkified Exploding Kitten. Uh, this Exploding Kitten that is being attacked by zombies. This one who basically dumped a bunch of stuff into a witch's cauldron. And then this one who essentially blows up animating Frankenstein's monster. Uh, one of the attack cards is Prize of the Dead, pulling basically a human out of a claw machine. But you know, looking at the new cards, I mean, I, I really like the uh, the art style. I've always enjoyed that with the game. Um, but I really like their style for the zombies. Um, even have a zombie Vincent Van Gogh. A stubborn T-Rex. So there's just a lot of really cool cards in here. Um, definitely a cool way to kind of bring more life into the game. But it's one of those games that just simply has not gotten old. And then lastly, hand-to-hand -hand Wombat. So this is meant for three to six players. Basically, everyone that's playing has a secret identity. Um, one person essentially is going to be trying to sabotage the work of everybody else. So you scatter the bricks into a play area and everyone closes their eyes or wears a blindfold if you have one. And you build wombat towers. And then secretly, the bad wombat is trying to sabotage those towers. And then at the end, once everything is built, everybody try to, tries to vote to see who they think is actually the one destroying everything. So we have our, looks like our scoreboard. Our rules. Um, and so for scoring, if three towers are complete, the good team gets two points. If two are complete, they get one point. If two towers are incomplete, the bad team scores one point. If three towers are incomplete, the bad team scores two points. Uh, a tower is complete if all six differently sized bricks are on the spindle in the correct order from largest at the bottom to the smallest at the top. And only one team can score at the end of each round. And the first team to get three points wins. So at minimum, you're gonna be doing two rounds. Um, after scoring, all players count down and point to who they think the bad suspect is. Um, the vote is just to give you something to talk about, discuss your suspicions before final vote. Um, after the final vote, if more than half of the players still in the game vote for one person, that player is out of the game and can no longer participate in building or voting. You can still talk, but don't ruin the game. So basically, and, and do not reveal the role of the remaining players. So while that person's out, you know, depending on the number of people you have playing, you know, they can basically see, you know, who the bad character is, and they're just not allowed to say who it is. Um, now, just because the bad person gets voted out, if, if they do, um, it's not the end. You, they still have to actually build the towers and complete that. And then it comes with a, a comic about wombats. And so we have some cards, which these are... The different roles as well as scoring so you see good bad confused so 
So the Confused starts on the good team and then permanently switches to the bad team when the good team has exactly two points. And then their goal is to win with their current team. So it's a way to kind of get somebody over to the bad team if uh, there's a lot of players. And then we have our stands, which just slide through the bottom. And then we have our tower pieces to build with, which will be scattered all over the table. And then if the good team wins, that's what it should look like. Real simple to put together and take apart. Uh, definitely looking forward to this game. I've actually been looking forward to this since it was first announced for Kickstarter. Uh, we just weren't able to actually participate in the Kickstarter. Um, let's see where that piece go. All right, I'll find it here in a minute. Um, but the game definitely looks like a lot of fun. Really looking forward to playing it. Um, but wanted to say thank you to Exploding Kittens for sharing these games with us. We definitely are looking forward to playing them. Um, thank you guys as always for watching, and I hope you have yourselves a great night. Thank you.